Lamed Vav, a collection of the favorite stories of Rabbi Shlomo Kalibach, the bookbinder. The Talmud says that when we learn, we should always say the words out loud, otherwise we'll forget because actually uttering the words fixes the Torah in our souls. The holy Ishpitzer Rebbe has an even deeper teaching. When you kiss something, you don't speak, because what happens with a kiss is beyond any words. There was once a bookbinder named Moshe who lived in the city of Premishlan. Now Moshele was a quiet, unassuming person, and everybody thought that he was just a very simple Yid. But a few weeks after Moshe left this world, the holy Rebbe Meir of Premishlan went up to heaven to speak to Rabbi Shmuel Schmelke of Nippelsburg, one of the teachers of the Seer of Lublin. And whom did he find sitting next to the Heiliger Reb Schmelke on high, but Moshele the bookbinder? Moshele, Rebbe, Rebbe Meir blurted out in surprise. How is it that you are sitting here? Everyone in heaven shouted at Rebbe Meir, Please, have a little respect. Didn't you hear the heavenly voice decree that from now on this man is to be called Reb Moshe? Now everybody knows that the Heliga Premishlana was so humble that he never used the word I. He always referred to himself in the third person. So now he tried again. Rebbe Meir is terribly sorry, Reb Moshele. But he doesn't understand. He thought he knew you well, but he never realized that you were a Rebbe. Please, Holy Master, Reb Moshele replied, don't apologize. To tell you the truth, I really was just a simple bookbinder, not a learned man. To me, it was a great honor simply to prepare the holy books that others would use in their study. But let me ask you, do you know how to bind a book? You always have to trim the edges of the pages to make the sides of the book straight. These cut pieces just fall down to the floor. But of course, you only cut off the parts of each page that have no writing on them. All day I would trim the pages and bind them together. Then every night I would lie down on the floor and gather up all the edges I'd cut off. Of course, I thought these pieces were blank. Yet, blank or not, I kept remembering they had come from holy books. So I'd reverently kiss every scrap of paper, take them all to the cemetery and bury them as is fitting for fragments of holy Svarim. Two weeks ago, when I came up here to heaven, all those pieces of paper were waiting for me. For the first time, I could see what was really written on them, and so as my reward for honoring them, I'm now sitting next to Reb Shmuel Shmelki. 
You know, paper with writing on it is holy, but it's not as holy as paper that appears blank. When you find this kind of holy paper, hold it up. Look at it with the light of a candle, but not the glow of a regular candle, with the light of the candle of your soul. On this blank paper, find your name, your father's name, your great, great, great grandfather's name. See how you are connected to all the Yidden in every place and in every time, all the way back to Avraham Avinu. Then imagine how it feels to find the names of your children, of your great, great grandchildren on that blank piece of paper. Let the day be soon when the writing on all the blank paper will be revealed.